As a part of its uh, third quarter financial results, Ubisoft has announced that starting in March 2022, uh, the company will be shifting the focus of its business model away from AAA games. Uh, and this comes as a radical shift for the publisher who regularly releases uh, three to four AAA games per year. Uh, CFO Frederick Duguet, Dujua, whatever, <laughs> sees the uh, company pushing to a model in which they, uh, quote, have a combination of strong releases from AAA and strong back catalog dynamics, but also complementing our program of new releases with free to play and other premium experiences. Uh, Ubisoft CEO, Yves, I, I said this e- name before. E- Eves, Eves. E- Eves, uh, Guillemot, elaborated Guillemot. on the stra- Guimo. I thought. I thought I said it right the first. <laughs> right, wait, are you fucking with me now? <laughs> no, it was Eve's Gimo. Everyone knows Eve's Gimo. He's the Bond Eve's villain. Eve's <laughs> Elaborated yeah, on the new... St- Elaborate on the new strategy, uh, noting that existing games and service titles such as Rainbow Six Siege and The Division <clears> 2 <throat> will continue to play a heavier role in the company's future financial growth. Um, I'm kind of of two minds of this, where I think out of like the big corporation publishers, whatever, I think I would actually put Ubisoft higher up in terms of like the quality of their overall games. And like, I don't want to go like a fucking rise up gamers, but I feel like they respect their customers a little bit more, especially with uh, you play Mm -hmm. with the refunds and the way you can get. No, they do not. (laughs) But um, are we going to forget the, the year of 2020 well i don't know was it 2020 when all that nightmare shit came out about ubisoft's management i think when it all it kind of started trickling out i think it was like 2019 okay but um yeah that, that that's just mm-hmm. fucked up. yeah of but course. in terms of like just like their output i think their output's actually pretty good even if i don't necessarily care for um stuff like the division or like even like the annualization like kind of bloating that they've done to franchises such as um assassin's creed and watchdogs but at the end of the day they're still making uh top quality products that people swear by and they fucking sell so people like them um i want another rayman game make another rayman game (laughs) Mm because legends is so fucking good um but i I think it's interesting they push specifically on the games as a service stuff and as i've said i don't care about division two that's whatever looter shooter you want to call it but mm-hmm. the way that they've turned Siege around from its initial release, and I believe it was 2015, 2016, where it was just kind of like a sloppy turd over there. But they really, really freaking turn it around. It has a killer fan base. And uh, I would even say a very toxic fucking fan base, specifically on PC. But it's surprising how much money that they're able to make just off of like micro- microtransactions off of that. It's not even just like the initial sales, people buying it on sale. Or anything like that. Um, I mean, I I don't buy microtransactions, but apparently a lot of people fucking do because they like um, not a I guess you get aesthetics. Um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Cosmetics. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, if that's able to support their games and it continues to make a good product even better with like free updates, like I, I like all the operators I've gotten through Rainbow Six Siege, which are like extra characters you have to earn like in-game credits to buy them to plays them. they have their own unique skill sets and whatever um that's free content for me and if other people want to buy microtransactions so that i can get free content fuck it go for it i don't care um any thoughts mesa yeah um uh you know this this whole this will do nothing but you know hopefully have a uh, overall increase in overall quality of the general games of the general AAA games you know whatever the next assassin's creed is if we ever do see another splinter cell um don't get my hopes up hopefully hopefully those things w- w- will be of a of a, of a of a of a higher tier because of this decision i th- i think they could even just specifically benefit from just having more time in the oven Mm-hmm. Be smarter about not how much content, but what kind of content makes it in there. Because mm-hmm. uh, Valhalla has like way too much shit in him. Just like this isn't even good content. The game would be better if you just slimmed it down. Just just take some of the stuff out. But um, I, I think I think like yes, like ultimately this is probably going to be a good thing. Um, 
I know like some some people were concerned just like, oh, is this going back to the days where every company in the world was like, uh, console gaming's dead, like mobile's the way to go. I don't think this is necessarily that. I think it's just no, no. re-strategizing and being a little bit smarter about how they approach things versus um, uh, spewing stuff out like three, four big games a year. Mm-hmm. How about you, Blaine? Any thoughts on Ubisoft and their insistence on not releasing a new uh, Splinter Cell or Rayman? <laughs> nah, um, I mean, I, there's not a lot for me to say without going a 3D off on Rayman. The, there was one. It was called Rayman 2. Um, I made another one. The Great Escape. Wait, was it? Is that, wait, is that the subtitle for it? I think so. Rayman I mean, 2. Yeah, The Great Escape. It has a green cartridge on the N64. Without, without, it's hard to talk. It's hard for me to really say anything how I feel about this without mm-hmm. then going off on one of my many. I'll believe, I'll believe that things like microtransactions solely exist to support a game and benefit the customer when they, people actually pay their employees and pay their taxes and the video game industry is not a goddamn hell nightmare escape of both of, of abuse and of toxic work environments in general, as well as just people being paid way under what they should be. Um, that being said, uh, I guess I don't really care about um, whatever Ubisoft's doing with their with their plans. Um, I mean, if they're because if the whole thing is that they want to do less releases and more just work on the service angle of things, that doesn't really seem that different from what they've been doing. Um, Because what, like Siege and Division 2 have been kind of their go tos after almost every Ghost Recon has kind of gone belly up about a, I want to say, year after they've been released. At Mm -hmm. least in the last uh, two installments or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, That one mobile game that was just. Fucking the one that was literally like we're gonna make NT for the 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 bad guys, but don't. Tell oh anybody. god, I remember that. <clears throat> so like, I don't know. Like it's just it's hard for me to. I'm not again. I'm not obviously not you two, but it's just it's hard for me to try to think of any positive side of this when I just I'm just kind of <clears throat> with Ubisoft. I mean, again, I play Siege. I ha- I've owned it for a while and I enjoy the game, mm-hmm. but like. I do think it's kind of weird now that like I used to be able to buy like the operator packs so I could get them all for like one price. Now the only way you can do that is you can either buy the year five pass, which will give you the year five operators, but you have no access to the other uh, packs. You can mm. buy them all at once with with like a direct. I think it's like a button that like it's like oh buy everyone for the exact amount of Rainbow six credits that it would cost. But I also think that that's Rainbow Six credits, not a money amount. So that means that I would have Rainbow Six credits left over, which is again. Yeah, they the always get you with that shit. So like, ins- to yeah. like to get you to buy more. Exactly. So I mean, I bought a season pass, which again I know probably makes me a hypocrite with them, but like, I don't know. It, I just I don't I don't necessarily see this as a sign of oh well things could very well very much very well get better with them. I think things are probably going to stay the same. They're going to keep doing what they're doing. Maybe we'll see a little bit more content for these games, but I don't know. I would maybe rather actually see them commit to like releasing some, not just sit on the same things that have been making been making money mm-hmm. for however long. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know why. Like the second you mentioned the um, the uh, the currency that you have to buy with, with money, the uh, rainbow points, whatever the fuck they're called, it just got me like thinking on this entire diatribe about fucking. Do you, do you remember Microsoft points in the 360 yep. era? Of course, yeah. It was like it was like some stupid fucking conversion it's, ratio. It's like ten dollars was like sixteen hundred points. At least, at least on the exist. Wii, at least on the Wii, it was just one to one. You know, mm-hmm. with the, the shop credit, the Xbox. It was like was it eight eight hundred points was like five dollars or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, five or ten or so. I think sixteen hundred <laughs> was like ten. <laughs> That's so dumb. <laughs> Why would they do that? Oh, it's yeah. like 15 year olds listening right now that are just like, wait, what's a Microsoft point? <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, fuck, at least PlayStation was just like up front, just like, here, here's a $20 card. You get $20 to spend on our mm-hmm. fucking platform. Uh, apparently, yeah. I was wrong. There's a Wikipedia entry for Microsoft points. 
Uh, eight hundred was ten dollars, so sixteen hundred was uh, ten dollars. Oh, I was right the first time. Yeah, and then, and yeah, then like, they, yeah, with we credit, it was like twenty dollars is twenty points, or no, it was two thousand points. Yeah. Oh, what, I was like, okay, is, I my brain can wrap around that. Well, that's a, that's the difference between like actually like them having a currency that they want you to spend and like it being fair versus it essentially being casino mechanic. <laughs> a lot of those microtransaction currencies are. Mm-hmm. And speaking don't of you, that, well, don't you want V bucks? <clears throat> you can get the Mandalorian skin. Don't get blocked. <laughs> um, and so they and, and to go back to Street Fighter Five for a second, Street uh, Capcom. One, one of the one of the cool things that they've done with Street Fighter is um, they actually have every year they have the the, the Capcom Cup Pack. It comes with two costumes and a stage. And part of those proceeds directly go to the prize pool for Capcom Cup. Oh, okay. so when you buy that DLC, you know you're directly adding money to whoever's gonna win that that you know check at the end of the year. Well, that's cool. I think that's really cool. Yeah, nice. that is pretty neat. 